Hello! I have yet another piece of professional sound equipment for repair here. This time it is Maki SRM450 V2 powered loudspeaker that does not power up. It is in a decent shape externally, just a few scratches here and there, no problem at all. So let's see if we can deal with the electronics. I have no idea what's wrong with it. Let's have a look. Here is the back of the unit and I see that someone had a go at this thing. The screws around this power amplifier are missing. Only two screws on top are holding this module in place. I don't quite like this, but uh, anyway, let's take this amplifier out and see what's inside. Here I took the amplifier out and I see that these uh, connectors were disconnected from the board. This connector is the speakers, woofer and tweeter and this must be for LED on the front. And I also see that a fuse here is missing. Here is this amplifier module. Let's have a closer look at it. Here we have mains input, power switch, audio in and through, level control, some buttons, and this giant heatsink. And on the board I see two sections. This must be the amplifier and this is the switch mode power supply here. So here we have mains input uh, jumping over here. There is some filter in here, missing fuse. This must be a diode bridge rectifier, smoothing caps. This is the main control of the switch mode power supply. Uh, here are some active devices under this piece of insulation clamped to the heat sink. This must be the transformer between the primary and secondary. Some diode rectifiers on the secondary side perhaps. Uh, these two under the board are also diodes I believe. Must be rectifiers as well. This is the connector for the speakers. This is some sort of uh, an inductor, I believe, marked L11 here. This is a 12 volt regulator. This is uh, the connector for the LED. A piece of shielding here. And I think this um, thing has uh, two separate amplifiers for the woofer and tweeter. So this chip must be one of them. I'm not sure which one. These two devices are probably MOSFETs uh, for the other one. And uh, this looks like a temperature sensor for protection. I see a problem here. I started looking closer at these two rectifiers under the board over here. And let's see how close can I zoom in without losing focus. Um, something like this. And hopefully you can see a broken off pin over here and over here on both devices. And this looks very familiar. In one of my recent videos I repaired Maki Thump TH12A loudspeaker with exactly the same problem. And I'm starting to think that uh, this is a common issue for these Maki speakers. And I can imagine a couple of ways this happens. One is uh, if a speaker is dropped, this board might flex a little bit because of some heavy components on it, especially this transformer over here. And uh, because devices are rigidly mounted on the heatsink and board flexes, the pins can break off. And another way might be during normal operation. Because these are powerful speakers and probably vibrate quite a bit. And again, board can flex a tiny amount. 
and eventually these pins can break off. Here I managed to lift this board from the heat sink and for that all the bolts and clamps uh, holding these devices to the heat sink have to be removed. And also this uh, little module with input connectors is attached by three wires soldered directly to the board. So I just removed four screws. And here we have these two damaged devices uh, and turns out they're completely broken off all three pins on both devices. And on the other hand all other devices are fine, no problem at all. And I guess that's because there are two standoffs here and here supporting this uh, part of the board and uh, there are no massive components on this side. But on this side, uh, there are massive things like this transformer, uh, some other inductors and big capacitors and such. And even if there are two more standoffs here and uh, two here, as I said, uh, big mass right here probably uh, makes this board flex a little bit and here is the result. I found the schematic for this version, SRM450V2, and here they are, the damaged devices, D43 and D44. They are rectifiers for the high voltage rails for the power amplifier, plus and minus 75 volts. And this one is the same we have seen in the Maki Thump 12A. I still have a few extra ones from that project. And this one is different, it is with common anode as opposed to common cathode here, and it has this extra letter R at the end. I don't have a replacement at the moment, I need to order it. And here they are on Mauser, dual common anode, this letter R, and uh, $1.59 a piece and plenty of them in stock and can ship immediately. Should be here in a few days. The replacement parts have arrived and I also got some new fuses, 6.3 amp slow blow. That's what they need to be for the 120 volt mains according to the marking next to the fuse holder. Let's take a look at these uh, insulating and uh, heat transferring pads between the power devices and the heat sink here. There is one large and thick, seems like ceramic pad here for the power supply. Then this uh, layer of insulation folds over four devices. Then uh, this clamp uh, clamps two devices on this side and the amplifier chip on that side. There is a mica pad for the amplifier chip here. Uh, two more devices here are clamped by this thing with the temperature sensor in it. Then there are two small and thick, again uh, looks like ceramic, pads for the power MOSFETs. Uh, this is for the um, woofer amplifier and those MOSFETs are held by uh, two bolts like this with plastic insulators and uh, these two diodes we are replacing have mica pads as well one mica pad is stuck to this damaged device and they are held by these two bolts with plastic insulators as well so all this stuff needs to be carefully put back in place. I am going to physically decouple these devices from the board. This is a compromise. The wires should not be too long and too thin because it's a high current circuit. And on the other hand, thick and short wires would be too rigid, which would defeat the purpose. I think something like this should work fine.
the module is back together let's give it a go and this sort of thing should be done very carefully high voltages are all over this thing aha uh -huh. power led lights up which is a very good sign let's try to measure something this time I'm going to use this right angle uh, cable so it's more convenient to turn this thing over like so and uh, let's see how can I turn it on now there you go I believe it's on and I looked at the schematic where it is most convenient to check the high voltage rails so we can use the ground anywhere uh, on the heatsink and uh, I believe the best way is on the capacitors here right next to the MOSFETs I could check uh, the rails there as well on the diodes but I'm afraid of shorting the pins there accidentally so let me check here on the capacitors this is one rail 76 volts and the other one should be here minus 76 wonderful and let's also check the voltage offset on the output to the speakers i believe uh, this and this pin in this connector are outputs to the woofer and tweeter not sure which is which uh, there is no offset here and about 70 millivolts here which should be okay I suppose and these should be grounds just to check yeah no offset here as well all right I believe it looks fine so I put the amplifier module back into the speaker and I found this uh, balanced to unbalanced cable so this end I can plug into the input through it doesn't matter both connectors are in parallel and this end I can plug into my Korg Reefen synthesizer so we can try let's turn the speaker on and let's play something here there you go we have a successful repair I hope you like this if you do please give the video a thumbs up subscribe and share thank you very much bye